Hi everyone, episode 291, Aussie Tech Heads, how are you all this week? I hope you are all fine and dandy. It's uh, recorded late this week, unfortunately, but fortunately, we're still here. It's recorded on Friday, the 25th of May. Happy birthday, Mark. And uh, what's been going on joining me this week is Eric. Hey Eric, how you doing? Uh, hi mate, uh, all good. Uh, happy to have a break on Thursday night. Uh, too bad we don't have the same sort of people in the chat room today because obviously everyone's at work except you and I, um, helping keeping this nation going as we do. That's uh, right. But everything's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yes, yeah, so we did take a, a break of Thursday night because that was my fault. Um, so anyway, we'll be back Thursday nights at uh, 7.30 live.thesecrethub.com where you can join us live in the lounge. Come and sit around and watch us live record. So you can join in audio. If you want to join in, ring us up through the show. Uh, just try and do it through the Skype Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, live video, as I said, uh, from live on Thursday nights. But you also watch the pre-recorded video or post-recorded, whatever you want to call it, on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash The Secret Hub. And thanks to Brad and techwebcast.info who, who lets us rebroadcast his show before Aussie Tech Heads, just to get you into the move, into the mood, uh, and techwebcast. What is he? Info. All right. Yes. Now, welcome to all the overseas listeners. We've had a few emails this week, so that's all good. Well, a few tweets and just a few little howdy doody. So that's good, especially for over there in England. Had a few of you guys there this week. And um, yeah, good stuff. The paper, twice a day, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. If you're interested in some tech news popping straight into your Twitter feed, or even if you want to read it as a magazine style on your iPad, just head over there, subscribe to it, and away you go. There's a few good stories, most of the stories that we talk about which uh, if you don't catch them on the paper, you can get them in the show notes, aussietechheads.com.au, show notes away. All right, so Eric, we better uh, obviously know Will this week because um, we are recording out of sequence or whatever you yes, want to call it, out, right. of, out of order. So um, yeah. no William, but he's busily working. So uh, good on you, Will. Allegedly, allegedly. Someone's got to keep the country going and Will's doing it for the country today. He's Good got stuff. a big deficit to pay off, so get moving. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, well, what's been going on in the world this week? Like, um, there's been a few, a, a few things. Now, I think one of the best things I'm going to actually put stories in order this week, if you don't mind. Yes. Probably from most exciting to probably least exciting. But uh, look, and this was actually one of the last stories that I I did fill up with. But uh, Spotify, you've heard of Spotify? Yes, I have. Now, it's launched in Australia. Yes. Yes, yes it has. So and, um, I haven't tried it yet. Have you? Yes, I downloaded and tried it just before. Oh, great. Did you have to use your Facebook login or could you use something else? No, I did it through Facebook, but I didn't try. I know it says apparently you can only use your Facebook login, but I didn't bother trying anything else. I just, just wanted to sign up. I didn't care less. Okay. Is that a problem for you? No. Well, yes and no. I don't like Facebook knowing everything about me, but what the hell, I'll give it a shot. But I think you can say, you can put into it, you didn't want it to hook up to Facebook. Or you didn't want it to post to Facebook. Oh, okay. So, because right. well, that's what I did, that. yeah. Because I, I don't want people knowing that I'm listening to, um, you know, whatever. Poxy music. Roxy music. Poxy music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want people know that I was listening to the same music as you listen to, basically. <laughs> <laughs> what but, classical Oh, yeah. Actually, that is re relaxing classical music, isn't it? I, I, I do like it a lot. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I used to listen to it when I was studying, and it was it just, just... It's nice. Yes, it is. It, it just clears your mind. It, it's, not, it's not heavy lyrics and all this sort of stuff. But anyway, but Spotify has launched. Uh, it's become Australia's first free streaming music provider. There you go. Sweden-based. It offers 16 million songs under a freemium model which gives subscribers the choice of listening for free with advertisements or paying to upgrade to ad-free and mobile-based services. So, look, as I said, I jumped on there, signed up, and, uh, yeah, it was uh, all free for the first 30 days. Uh, any song I'd put to it, it was there. Like, I tried some weird songs. Free for the first 30 days? Is that all? Yeah. But then it's free, but then you can go onto the free model. Which has got free added. with that free with ads, yeah. That's right, yeah. So apparently, look, I, I'm quickly reading through the. Um, let's have a look here. I'll see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can do something tricky and get the actual plans up. It's the last story in the list, so I've just got to scroll down a bit here. But um, 
Yeah, so here we go here. So we've got here, I don't know if you can see that for those of you on the video. But anyway, you've got the premium is at eleven ninety nine. Now that gives yeah. you, that gives you hang on, get me back on the thing there. So eleven ninety nine uh is on your mobile. It is offline mode for playlists, no advertisements and unlimited streaming of music. Now there's a six ninety nine per month, which is no advertising and unlimited streaming of music. Or there's the free version, which is obviously with advertising and uh, millions of tracks available instantly. So it worked for me. It, c it actually works for me. Like on your mobile is probably where you're going to find it the most satisfactory, I think. Uh, but then you have to pay 12 bucks a month. But, oh, uh, so mobile, you, you don't get the free one with the mobile? It doesn't look like it. It's not listed mm -hmm. in, the, in the, uh, the pricing structure there. Okay. So that's interesting. Yeah, but but even so, uh, like you, you've got it on your, you you could probably wiggle something about around it, you know, with your iPhone, Apple computer or your computer, maybe you know, stream it through Apple TV or something. You know, you you could do something if you got desperate. But um, but yeah, anyway, but that's good. So uh, look, sixteen million tracks or something. It's it's unbelievable. The Commonwealth Bank, McDonald's, Virgin Mobile, and Carlton United Breweries have signed up as exclusive advertising partners for the first three months, meaning that the free users will hear only ads from these organisations. And yes, and as Eric said, Spotify, signing up to Spotify can only be done through a Facebook account. So, okay, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm logged in now. Uh, it's got a very Apple-like interface on the software. It has, hasn't it? It's, and mm. it's ve it's a, it is an uh, iTunes style interface. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Now... Not bad. Yeah. Now you type a song, try, try a weird song that you can think of. Um, right said Fred. Oh, that'd be there for sure. <laughs> That's your theme song, isn't it? That's why you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Why not use that for chewing the fat? Yeah? Get that on, you reckon? Oh, no. I think it's copyrighted, wouldn't it be? <laughs> oh, you could play three bars. Oh, is that the rule? I don't know. You go, ding, ding. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. No, it's a bit of Bon Jovi in there, a bit of Bob Marley. Oh, right. look, everything. I tried. I've been punching Lonnie Donegan, and his album's come up. Lonnie who? Donegan. Never heard. You know, the Rock Island line? The Does Your Chewing Gum Lose Its Flavour on the Bedpost Overnight? All the classics, you know. Here we go. All the good ones. Okay, yeah, that's playing pretty well. Good yeah, one. thanks for sharing that. Now, I <laughs> couldn't hear a thing. Did you hear that? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Thought I had it off. Rodney Rude. Now, yeah, so that's 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 the uh, that's that good. So it's obviously going up against the JB's. What is it? Music Now or whatever they've called themselves. But uh, yes, yes, that's right. I've got one. But this one is actually streaming. So um, yeah. we'll see how. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I think my oldest girl would probably like this. Um, except just I hope she doesn't suck the life out of our bandwidth, and I have to upgrade my plan. <laughs> oh look, you're on it. What are you on? Two hundred gig? No, five hundred. Oh yes, yeah, if you're going to lose that. Oh, but mate, they watch. They're watching streaming stuff all the time. They suck the life out of yeah, it. Yeah, okay. What are they? What like YouTube's and YouTube? You know, channel one thirty one. Yeah, look, look. While I was, while I was, what's channel thirty one? Channel one thirty one. Check it out. Is that on Foxtel? No, it's a website. Channel one thirty one dot com. Oh, okay. Ch ch one three one dot com. All right. Yeah, because like as I when I as I was laid up yesterday, I was I turned on the T box, and because the look the T box, the one great advantage the T box has got is that it's free, it, it's free content. I mean, as in uh, bandwidth. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. That is true. Look, I, I, I was surprised. I downloaded a Steven Seagal movie because I thought, oh, you know, I haven't seen Under Siege for a while. Oh, well, that's a good movie. <laughs> so I thought, oh, but look, I, I, look, I noticed there was a late one there, you know, like 2012. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'll download that. So okay. I watched that. That was so-so. And then at the end of it, I went, well, what else has he got here? So I looked in what else he appears in or whatever, you know, in the catalogue with him in it. And blow right. me down. There's about five other ones come up released 2012. I'm going, what's going on here? He's done it like a, he's had a spurt. Is he has. He's done it all, all straight to video and just gone, right, that's it, let's go. Yeah, there's about five of them. So I downloaded another one. And, yeah, that one was all right. It was Born to be Wild or something. But, yeah, that one was all right. <laughs> it was good. 
She had a good day yesterday. <laughs> oh, I did have a very relaxing day yesterday, which is uh, give me the charge up I needed for today. I think. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now, on on the subject of streaming, yes. During the week, this is one of my stories. Um, Quick Flix released their app for iPad and iPhone, so that you can watch. So it's like the next Netflix model. Yes. You can watch Quick Flix on your iPad or iPhone now. I'm not sure they've they've got this for a Mac or a PC, so you can just then, you know, HDMI into your big screen. Yeah. Or not. Um, I know with the iPad you can send it, and with an iPhone too, I suppose you could get rent the movie, sit it down next to it, and send it to your Apple TV. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, they've got in their rates. It's not too bad. Rates. Watch TV, movie. But, yeah, so because you're not going to be pretty much watching a movie on your mobile. No, but you can stream it from, because with the Apple devices, you can stream it to your Apple TV, and, which is hooked up to your normal TV. Yeah. Here we go. $14.99 a month, unlimited streaming. That's TVs, that's TV and movies. Yeah, so th- this is, yeah, right. When did this launch? Uh, well, the apps launched this week. And the streaming, I'm not sure when that launched, but it's been very quiet. I haven't heard anything, so I'm surprised I haven't. See, for fourteen, seen it. fifteen dollars a what was it month? Yeah. So look, let's browse, browse the TV new releases. Let's see what's in the new, new releases. So you can do this now. You can download your TV shows now. Yeah, pretty much. Or we'll okay. stream them at the very least. Yes. Yeah, so what have we got here? We've got new releases: True Blood, Mildred, and Mildred Pierce, Teen Wolf. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think with the TVs, I've only got HBO on 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 signed up at the moment. Right. But, um, but with, I think they've got more on the movie section. You know, got Dragon Tattoo. Uh, you know, Tower Heist, uh, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, look at that, Doctor Who. Yeah, there you go. It looks like all the series are there. Now, but go to the pricing section. Go to what is Quick Flix. On the tab there, and, the, the da- and there's a little tab that says um, pricing packages, right? They just make sure. Where are they? Pricing packages? Yeah, and just hover over the Quick Flix banner. The What is Quick Flix Oh, banner. yeah. Right, click on that. Now, tell me if you understand this. Go scroll down to the light. light. Yep, yep. So watch now only, right? Yeah. Light. It says the light one is two DVDs per month. Yep, five ninety nine, plus. Watch now standard. Right. Five fourteen dollars. Yes. Equals five ninety nine per month. Because I think add you've got to click in the add box and tick it. Oh, I see. So you got to add. You got to add it. Now nineteen dollars. Yeah. yeah. So it's four. So the fourteen ninety nine gives you unlimited streaming. Right. But so you've you got just want two DVDs. You get it's two DVDs a month for five ninety nine. But it looks like you can't have unlimited streaming by itself. You can, you can. On the oh, you can one, you. Oh, you can. Own. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, that that's pretty good. If you're into TV shows, isn't it? That is pretty good. Yeah, if you like watching movies and you're not, and you know, look, forty nine nine a month. You don't have to watch three movies in a month. Mm. And th- you know, and you're over the, your um. Your well, one off joining fee twelve ninety nine. Yeah, that's a bit of a pain. Access to Blu-ray discs can be added to the light and basic plans for an extra four bucks. Like, what the go? What's the go with that? You might as well just be downloading. You might as well be just streaming it in HD. What's the point? Po- poly, what pay views? Extra disc rentals are available on the light and basic subscription package. Four dollars per disc. Well, that, that's um, look, that, that's going to force all the others down. Because uh, what yeah. big big pond movies are? Uh, Six. what five ninety nine, well, six ninety nine. Uh, they're about the same, actually. They're all about the same. And there's a pay per view too. So if you, for, if I don't, if I can't see any movies on Apple TV or Big Pond, I'll go to here and think, oh well, they've got movies I can't find anywhere else, and they're about the same price. And you can just pay per view, five ninety nine a movie. Yeah, yeah, That's all right. Yeah, look, look, I was surprised. Look, there's, there's only one. I don't watch a lot of movies, but there was one movie that I was keen to watch, and that was the the new Wall Street movie, Money Never yeah, Sleeps. Yeah, it. it's good. It's but good. you know, Big Pond doesn't have it. And they still don't have it. I searched oh, for it yesterday. It no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'll go and hide the damn thing from the bloody bricks and mortar shop. 
But I mean, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but it's not if there. If you can find one. Yeah, true. But I was just, I was saying, well, that Spotify, that's going to kill music stores. Oh, it's gone. It'll kill this CDs. Gone. Music stores are gone. This with Big Pond and, and iTunes, it's, that's, it's finished. Yeah. So, like, you know, you walk into JB Hi-Fi, all, they've got all their CDs and videos there. Well, that, that JB Hi-Fi's got a half. Yeah. They'll go. Because yeah. why, why would you be paying? Why would you be paying money for CDs and DVDs and movies and all this when you can just stream them for 15? Whenever you want to watch them, you just, just watch well, it. For 15 bucks a month, you buy a DVD for 25 bucks, just say. Yeah. Um, you know, thirty dollars for, for a um, Blu-ray. Yeah. You think, well, what, what you watch it once and it costs you thirty dollars on your on yeah. the monthly model. You can watch it a thousand times for yeah. fifteen bucks plus then, a thousand other movies. But then just looking back here, like I don't I don't really want to spend too much more time on QuickFlix and and than that. But but just looking at the pricing again, you've got here the um, unlimited right regular unlimited DVDs, unlimited amount of DVDs that you can uh, hire yeah. per month, two out at yeah. a time. Twenty-two dollars, ninety-nine yeah. a month. So now, yeah. you come across to Foxtel, and what the movie packages are about twelve, thirteen dollars for the each package. Uh, yes, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Maybe fifteen. So all of a sudden, but, there's nothing on there. But there's nothing on there. Exactly. They don't get, exactly. They don't get the re- latest releases. They, you t- um, get the movies after it's yeah. been hit. It's been. It's on DVD. So then now you can see now Foxtel's going to probably have to readjust their structuring, because they're going to have to. Well, yeah. So this is good. It's a it's win. It's a win win for everyone. Woo-hoo. Win win for the consumers and for us. We're not pirating stuff here. We're willing to pay for it. Yeah, that, yeah. Fifteen. But at bucks. least we get to watch it. You know, I'm not gonna. Why subscribe to the movies package of the Foxtel, which I haven't, which I won't, for yeah. fifteen dollars a month, and I'm watching stuff that was released two years ago. Mm, and I can pay fifteen dollars a month for this and yeah. watch the stuff that's re- already on DVD now. And you don't have a choice, and you have to watch it when it they say you when it's on. Like this, well, they've changed that now. They've changed that. You can have a choice and watch it. Um, what you call it? Like, they can have a name for it. It's a, you know, watch when you like sort of. On setup. demand. But, yeah, on demand. Yeah. yeah. But there's very limited stuff and it's all old. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's interesting. Go and have a look at those. Quick Flicks and Spotify. Well done. That's good. That's something to get excited yeah. about. Now, moving on to other things, other things more, a bit more technical <laughs> is uh, yes. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt yes. arrives on PCs. We've, we've mentioned this before, but now it has actually arrived on ASUS and MSI motherboards. So they're the first with the Thunderbolt-equipped motherboards, the Asus P8Z77V Premium, the Asus Pro, the same P8Z77V Pro Thunderbolt, and the MSI Z77A GD80. I know you all love to hear those model Gee, numbers. I tell you what, these PC vendors, they really know how to turn off consumers by having these stupid model numbers. What do you reckon that they all stand for? They must stand for something. Like, must be well, like they stand for something, but it's th- that's what happens when you leave it to the to the hands of engineers to name the products. Mm. Like, Why don't you just call it MacBook Pro or iPad? No, well, it's, a, it's the board. They should have just put, um, they should have just called it the MSI well, just Thunderbolt. Call it the v Premium or the V Pro <laughs> Thunderbolt. Yeah, Thunderbolt 1, Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3. Yeah. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt Premium, Thunderbolt Pro. Thunderbolt, ah, uh, go. Uh, they all have the Intel I.O. standard on board. Maximum bi-directional data transfer speed up to 10 gig. So that's around 20 times faster than USB 2. New motherboards have the ability to daisy chain up to six devices with a single cable mm. while, uh, while maintaining maximum throughput. That's uh, good. So, yeah, I can't wait to get some uh, my hands on some yeah, Thunderbolt well, my stuff. Next, my next MacBook Pro will have Thunderbolt in it. So my wife's mm. got her MacBook Air has got Thunderbolt on it, but I've got no Thunderbolt cables or Thunderbolt other devices to hook it up with, so it's pointless. Has my little Mac Mini got a Thunderbolt? I think it might have. Uh, I think it, when you when did you buy it? Oh, Less than a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Probably got one already. It's the newest one. Yeah, it's probably got yeah. one already. Yeah, probably. Uh, now Siri, there's bad news for Siri lovers. If you work for IBM, IBM's banned Siri from the workforce. Work, IBM's got a workforce of nearly, or over, or nearly, 400,000 employees globally. That's huge, isn't it? That's huge, yeah. Half of them are doing nothing. <laughs> what do they do? What do they do? Ask them. They wouldn't tell you. IBM Chief Information Officer Jeanette Horan explained that the app sparked concern because users' spoken queries are potentially stored on Apple servers. <sighs> 
when they're susceptible to falling into the hands of unauthorized listeners. Apple's iPhone software license agreement alleg- allegedly confirms. What does it allegedly confirm? It either well, confirms it or not. So you're not accusing anybody. But what doesn't it say it or not? Isn't it black and white if it, you're talking about something in yeah, writing? Yeah, I know, it, it probably, it's probably to do with some legal. If you say allegedly, it means you're not accusing and you can't get sued. All right, so their licensing agreement, iPhone's licensing agreement confirms IBM's belief in which it states the following. When you see Siri or dictation, the things you say will be recorded and sent to Apple in order to convert what you say into text. Now, that's probably right, but do you really want to get that worried about it? Well, I can it? understand if you're if you're dictating an email or a text message with, with uh, sensitive information. Mm. That's probably True. fair enough. True. But if you're um, going to Siri saying, Siri... Where's the next fat pizza shop? <laughs> yes. Who cares if Apple gets that? Yeah, yeah, but then, but then, but I suppose you don't know what. So anyway, so as the story goes, IBM employees still can use the iPhones in the offices, but they have been asked to turn the Siri functionality off. Now, IBM's bring your own device environment is risk free before a device is even granted access to the company's network. IT configures it so that its memory can be erased if lost or stolen yeah they've got the uh, apple actually introduced software for enterprises that they can actually uh, hook their all the iphones onto it for security purposes they can wipe them if they're if they're lost yeah and apple's freely giving that out to to companies oh all right yeah yeah what as in like to other phone makers they would have to actual enterprises like ibm or oracle would they have patented that though Remote, remote. It's patented, but it's it's a free, it's a free license. The software is um, you, you load it onto your um, I think they all use Exchange Server or something like that. You load it onto that. Right. I've got it. I've got it at my office. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it just comes free with it, and it just you just load it up. And if I lose my phone, I can either wipe it using Apple software here at home, or I can go to Microsoft software at the office and do the same thing. I can wipe it. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, uh, well, speaking of Apple, uh, Apple, what's his name, Tim Cook, he's topped the list of highest paid CEOs in the US, beating Oracle second place boss Larry Ellison. By, he beat him by over $300 million. But. Yes, but. but a lot of those things, he only, his real salary is $900,000 a year. Um, the rest of it is in, in shares, which he can't cash in for 10 years. So, you know. What happened there? Oh, pause. Oh, microphone down. We're hit, we're hit. Microphone down, microphone down. We're hit, we're hit. This will be edited uh, in the podcast. Um, I will. I can swear now and use F words because I know Glenn will... Uh, Edit this out for me. So for all you viewers on Google Plus and the stream, get ready for some uh, some swear words. Hey, we got th- we got a few viewers on Google Google Plus, my friend. Oh no, that's another hangout. Do do do. Got it. I'm back. I'm going to type something on Skype for you. Hang on. This, um, hang on. I, I don't hate want to say this out loud. I oh. hate these um, rechargeable batteries. For some reason, they're thicker. They're thicker. Can you believe it? They're like yes. a, a, a bee's dick thicker than the normal ones, and they're hard to get out of the thing. They're hard to get out. Now this this is now this has been typed to me in confidence, but this is also dangerous. <laughs> Because you don't know where this window is going to open. Okay. So what we'll do? <laughs> we'll just have so, a <laughs> give the, put the camera on me. Put the camera on me. Yeah, but it might open over you, and then. No, 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 it can't. It can't. Hang on. What we'll do is we'll put that on. There we go. Oh, it did too. Now, um, be careful what you say based on what I just wrote. Now, 
we can put that. Yeah, look, I don't care what people say. They, in the bin? They can put that in the bin. They can say whatever they like. I don't care. You care, yeah, but be careful what you say. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Now, let's get back into it. Now, blah, blah, blah. Blah, now I'll have to um, start that one from here, I suppose. It was just after the Siri conversation. So let's have just have a recap if we can. Um, the rest of it is in, in shares, which he can't cash in for 10 years. Okay, so he can't cash in for 10 years. That's right. That's right. Uh, and, yeah, so he can't cash him in for 10 years, but 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 he's he's still not being paid apparently is he is he continuing the Steve Jobs No 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 he gets a salary of about a million dollars a year Well the Wall Street Journal has written that Cook's total compensation compensation in 2011 came in at 378 million thanks to restricted yeah. stock grants his annual salary came in at 90 cents No that's wrong it's 900,000 uh, I thought that yeah oh look I, I do actually apologise. I was going to go and check that out because I thought that was silly. But then I knew I knew Eric could know the answer. So I didn't. That's nine hundred thousand. Unless I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, uh, that, I just thought then he was continuing in the in the footsteps of Jobsy. You know, dollar a year, but he he makes his money from the incentives and from the stock, yeah, from the yeah, stock and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but it's, uh, what else we got here? Windows eight. Multiple monitors. Well, it looks like... How many? How many? Well, you can... I don't know. It doesn't actually say. But it's going to be more support, more valuable support for multiple monitors. Because at the moment, like I've got two. I could possibly do with a third. But... Doesn't it, de doesn't it depend on the graphics card you've got in? Oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. Is yeah, it, yeah. Or, is it, or is it operating system driven as well? No, no. It, I can put three. I could put four on if I wanted to. But I think on my setup, I can do eight. Yeah, but quite. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't need eight. Geez, I need to move. I need a new house. For God's sake. <laughs> You'd need to move closer to the electricity plant. <laughs> yeah, I know. Carbon tax. <laughs> oh no, it's kill you. <laughs> oh, the carbon tax. The payments come out next week. Woo now, w yeah. So, but, but what I'm saying is that um, is that these monitors, like, yeah, I could, you could possibly have more than four. You could possibly have up to eight. But they the you know if you choose a desktop theme, at at, at it mirrors across all all desktops or monitors, right. but what? Right. So unlike what is it? Apple's desktop manager, where you've got four different desktops, like virtually four different desktops. You're right. So um, Microsoft will offer more tools and support for multitasking users who who are using more the multiple monitors. They're dropping Aero Glass, so right. probably good. I don't know what they're going to bring in in that. Have you ever used? Nothing. That you know how you can is it shift tab or something and it sh it yep, slices yep. the windows up in a in a accordion yep. style. Have you ever yep, used that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I've used it. It's sort of three D effect. Yeah, it's but have right. you have you used it um, yeah. for productivity or just no. mucking around? No, mucking around. <laughs> yeah. um, look, look, if if they drop it, no one's really going to notice. I don't think. No, more than thirteen percent of desktop PCs PC users have two monitors attached to their system. Almost one percent yes. have attached. Uh, almost one percent have three attached monitors, and point three four percent have four attached monitors. So more than four percent of laptop PC users have two monitors. So there you go. Windows yeah. 8 will provide multi-monitor support to the taskbar, making it easier to manage multiple windows. It will allow users to choose personalized background screens for multiple monitors. Windows 7 units can only select a single image, as we as we just discussed before. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, so good thing is uh, users will be able to launch Metro style applications on one monitor and traditional Windows desktop applications on another. Uh, ah, so corner and edge controls, including the start menu, clock and other icons or charms. I've never heard of them called charms. I don't even know what charms are. Will be accessible from every monitor. So that's good. Okay. That's good. Like it'd be good to I'm have it. still not getting Windows 8. <laughs> oh, why not? Why I'm not? Still not getting it. Oh, turn it up. Get it on your dev license. You'll be right. Stop, no. Well, stop crying. It's free. Yes. Get it on my dev license. It'll be free. Stop. But I don't like it. 
<laughs> I might put it on a. T- I might put it on this this laptop that's not doing anything. I might whack it on there. See how I go. Put it on that old PC before you chuck it in the pool. <laughs> if you like it that much. Now, <laughs> now, uh, what else we got coming up? Gas coming up. He's going to be along soon with his little review, and we've got a few more yes. stories. Uh, so, look, Audible Books. We all know Audible Books. You can go to the AussieTechHeads.com.au website if you want to download an Audible book for free. If you haven't already joined, go and click on the link on the page on the website. Get in there, join up for free, and Bob's your uncle. Keep your first book. Get discounts for every book after that. Go your hardest. Go your hardest. It's yes. good. Good Go. stuff. So, um, but we'll be back next week uh, as as a planned Thursday, and we'll have another another review of a book that hopefully might interest you, might uh, yes. entice you to join if you haven't already joined. But that's uh, join up from the web page. Good on you. Now, let's go and have a chat with Garth. I think is he is he is his video ready? I don't know. See, Fridays, it, it's, it's messed me up. It's thrown you up. It's thrown you out. It has. You're gone. I've got Skypes coming in from me brother and all this sort of stuff who knows that, you know, busy Fridays. Everything's out of whack Fridays. But anyway, uh, well, let's go and have a chat. At, let's go and have a see what Garth's doing now, eh? Do you want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. All right. So, Garth, he's back with another app review, iOS app review. And, um, yeah, take it away, Garthy boy. Well, it's just a book, but it's a good one. What do you got this week for us, Garth? Hey, Glenn. How are you? Good. Bit of a different tack tonight. Yeah. Um, a lot of us, including you and I, have got kids. Yep. They love their iPads. Oh, yeah. They love books. Oh, yeah. The Going to Bed book by Sandra Boyington. Um, it's basically a kid's story book done for the iPad. Um, this, She's written a number of books um, that... My kids loved, and my oldest loved when he was when he was smaller. Yep. And now they've, you know, made it available on the iPad, and Sweet. the iPad is actually just a fantastic, um, what's the word, place, <laughs> fantastic <laughs> uh, medium. Yep. Media to consume this kind of. Yeah. Nice. Thing. Yeah. So, so the going to bed book, um, apparently iPad app of the week. It probably was. It's it's really well done. There's been a lot of these, um, you know, normal, like Peter Rabbit, you can get that one. Lots of books that have been converted for the iPad. Hmm. Um, the, you can do things like, as you touch the words, you know, it reads out that word. So okay. all the, all the um, words and the audio are synced. Um, so the kids can either read it themselves, if they're up to that stage, or it will read out the whole book. And the, the, um, the guy they've got reading this just sounds... Pretty Fantastic, good. Fantastic, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's really good. And then on every page, there's heaps of different things the kids can do, you know, different hmm. pop the bubbles in the bath or whatever it is. You know, there's lots of little games through the book, little, little so, things hidden through the book. So as the spiel says on the iTunes on the iTunes webpage, far beyond any e-book experience, the Going to Bed book app has all the magic and appeal of a traditional pop-up book, offering lively interactivity and thoroughly mesmerising and delightful discovery. Imagine an arc that rocks. Characters that respond to touch with sound and movement, tap water that turns on and off, and steam that fogs the screen. Can you write your name in the steam? Of course, there are teeth to brush. A group exercise session with a ten pajama clad animals, big and small, each with its own unique exercise. Help the little picky turn off the lights. Then rock yourself to sleep to the music box sound of beautiful twinkling stars. There's something wonderful on every page. And there is, and they have to put all that in the thing just to make you find it. <laughs> It's one of those things you just go looking and you find little, you know, little treasures here and there. Now, and the kids just, you know, these books, they absolutely love them. Now, this one is uh, free, not free? No, it's not free. I, oh, I can't remember. It's, it's not cheap. It's not too That's yeah, cheap. Four, four forty nine's all right. Four forty nine. Yeah, actually, that is cheap. Yeah. I think I paid more. Like that might be a half price or something. I think I paid more than that. But anyway, whatever the price hmm. compared to buying a paper book, it's. The, the, I mean, we used to pay $15, 20 for a book, no worries. Yeah. Now, this is brought to us by uh, the, the Loud Crow, Loud, lo, Loud Loud Crow, Crow. Interactive. That's yeah. right. We've now a few of them. Yes, exactly. So there's, there's also the, the Tale of Peter Rabbit, the Tale of Benjamin something, and, and I can't <laughs> read it. But anyway, there's, there's a... La 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 is another Sandra Boyington book that they've done. 
Yep, the tail um, of squirrel. And there's lots of them anyway. Yeah, there's, there's a few of them there. Yeah. So, so that's good. So, yeah, get get yourself one of those, like five bucks. I think I might do that for the little the little fella tonight. No, I love them actually, and it, it's just it's just sweet. The Going hey. to Bed book. Yep. Thanks, Garth. No worries. See you, See you next, next week. week. Bye. Yes, thank you, Garth. Very. Uh, thank you, Garth. So that was a, a quite a different review this week from Garth about a a, a a book, an online touch book, like a pop up book, but it's a touch book. So um. Yes, it's very good. Very yeah. good. I like that. Yeah, good stuff. And you can. Speaking of iPads. Yes. I'm very tempted to get the iPad three. <laughs> oh, I just keep going. Telstra have got them in full stock now. Every now and again, I was looking in the last few weeks since it's been released. Yeah. And they're out of stock, then they've got stock, then they've got out of stock. Then and I keep looking at it. You toss and turn. I keep doing the sums, and it makes sense. It just, it, it, it adds up. You know, financially, it adds up. Then to uh, what? Get another plan? Yeah. Yeah, well, if you're going to get a device with it, is that what you mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, I wouldn't. See, the thing is, there's two choices. You get one that's Wi Fi and 3G. Yes. Full price. You go and pay, you know, full book for it at Apple Store. Yeah. And only you only get a prepaid uh, SIM and use it just whenever you need it, right? Yeah. Um, or you buy it from Telstra and you get a monthly, I think it's four gig a month or three gig a month, I'm not sure. It's quite a bit. And, you know, and and it just, it just adds up. It, it yeah. just adds up. You just want the retina one, don't you? No, I look. You make that. the look. I know you accountants. You make the figures work. <laughs> yeah, we do make it work. We make one plus one equals whatever you want it to. That's right. If you want something, it'll equal whatever you want it to equal. <laughs> That's right. I can always easily justify it. So here it is. Here, right? For yep. example, sixty-seven a month for two years. Yep. Now. That's for the Wi-Fi and th- Wi-Fi three G, or you know, Wi-Fi and cellular, as they're now calling it. Yeah. Sixty-four gig iPad black, sixty-seven a month. Times two uh, times uh, twenty-four, sixteen oh eight. Now, if you take away the eight ninety-nine price of the iPad on that, divide the re- remainder by twenty-four. Yep. It's twenty-nine dollars fifty a month for four gigs. <laughs> That's data. not bad. And you've got, and so you've got the your old iPad. You still got that. The kids and, use that. Yeah, and so what are you going to put in there? You're going to continue on with a postpaid plan with that no, one. No, that one that one's only had a prepaid on the on the old iPad. Right. And I haven't I haven't charged that for oh six months. Yeah. Right. And right. Use it at home on the Wi-Fi. That's why I don't need to. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mine's only Wi-Fi only. And uh, look, right. I'll tell you one thing that I'm curious about. I don't know if you can answer me the question. I think I did ask some time before. Was that the apps? Like I've I've got like five gig of apps on the iPad, right. but but there's when I hook it up to iTunes, there's not five gig in the list. I don't know where the where the the uh, data is, uh, where where it is. Right. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The application itself is. Is there a data stored? Like if you use an application that saves data and yeah, all that Yeah, look, stuff? I've gone through all those as much as I could see. Uh, I just don't know what's, what's using up the, the 5 gig because that's 5. I've only got a 16 gig iPad. And, you well, know. Would it be that it's com- it's compressed prior to installation and that's that's and it's showing you the compressed size? Well, you iTunes? know when you get well, on iTunes, I'm not sure what, what size it would show you, but I know GarageBand, I, I downloaded the GarageBand app, and it's a lot, on the iTunes it shows as one gig, which is high, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then pretty much the rest of them are only like probably 300 meg at the most, you know. So well, I think it must, must ex- it must be compressed before it's installed or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. I've never really looked at that. Yeah, it's well, well, when you get a chance, if you want to, can you look at your, see how many gigs your apps take up and then see yeah, if you think okay. that's relative to what's in your iTunes. But, uh, mm. but, but getting back to some stories. Now, appar- apparently, there's two, two, uh, two uh, thoughts on the, uh, on the issue, but one, one mob, the, who is it, the stats counter, have suggested that Google Chrome has knocked Internet Explorer off the perch. And it's now more than 50% uh, usage than Internet Explorer. Yes. Chrome has taken over. Yes. 
as the most used desktop browser globally for the first time. But then you've got Net Applications reporting that Microsoft's browser still holds the lead with more than 50% worldwide of desktops, while Chrome and Firefox browser battle it out second spot with roughly 20%. So depends on who you who you're going to believe, what you believe. Yeah. But I would say that with that one, I would be thinking that I would have thought Firefox would have come up before Chrome. I thought there would have been more Firefox users yeah, uh, for well, a look, start. Look, somewhere in the middle is the truth. Yes, yeah. And I think that the, the truth is either which story you believe, if you're in the Microsoft camp, you're not happy. You're not a happy no. camper because Microsoft, you, they used to be those, oh, the old days, you know, 90, high 90 percent. Yeah, 98, 99, I think even, percent of, um, of desktop computers had IE on them. But now, well, uh, because you've got to remember too that now I think with Windows and especially in I think especially in Europe, that when you install a Windows program, you um, it's what's called Explorer is not the default. It gives no. you a choice. What do you want to install? Yeah, Safari, that's right. You know, and you choose what you want to choose. And I'm obviously if people are going, you know what? Yeah, let's try the others, and they stick with it. Mm. Well, you probably get majority of a lot of people probably just choose the first one, like you know the donkey boat. I just choose, yeah, choose the first yeah. one because it's the first one. They've yeah. got no idea what they are, but yeah. Uh, yeah so, so that that happened after the what was it the uh, the, the European the antitrust uh, blah blah yeah they weren't happy with Microsoft just d d defaulting installing the IE yes. so they've decided yes. they but then there was a big fight remember about who was first in the list whether it went alphabetical yes. whether it went yes <laughs> yes <laughs> it's hopeless. Well, see, that's the thing. Even if it was alphabetical, uh, Microsoft would have just changed the name of their browser to something starting with A. Yes, A Internet Explorer. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Internet Explorer browser. But I'll tell you, like, and this is why I think the Internet Explorer is just a, a hunky, junky piece of it stuff. It is. I don't like it. Look, I don't like it. Safari is light and, br and, and breezy. Look, I've had issues with uh, Internet Explorer going to the 9 MSN site very closely related, I think I brought this up before, can't play video. Can't play the 9MSN video on the web page. The plugins, the plugins not plugging in. So, but, but I can play it on Firefox or Chrome. So, okay, I think, okay, yesterday, it was only yesterday I sat down and I thought, right, I want to reinstall IE. I've reset the settings and I thought, that didn't work. I want to reinstall it. I'll go and actually download it from Microsoft and reinstall it. So I go to Microsoft. And it said, what do you want to download? So I go, Windows, 64-bit. So I download it. And then it goes, you have got a later version than the one you're trying to download. This will not... So, they don't, so on their own site, they it don't won't work. have a later version. No. So I thought, okay, I'll download the 32-bit. So I download the 32-bit. You have got the wrong operating system to install this one. Yeah, that's right. And you just, you know, you know what, you're better off uninstalling Explorer altogether and downloading it using another, another browser. Mm. Getting it off your system altogether, but I, but how do you uninstall it? I went through the programs. I didn't, I couldn't see it in the list. I in could the control panel. Yeah, I couldn't see it in the list. So because I think I'm, I I did go through that procedure. So I can look again because I did. You know, I was doing it pretty. You know, because I thought, oh, well, if I reinstall it anyway, it's just going to go over the top. So I wasn't too worried about uninstalling it. But I did look and I couldn't find it. So hmm. I'll, I'll look again. Maybe I scanned over it. But anyway, HP. They're in trouble, aren't they? They're not going too good. Uh, Slashing ten to fifteen percent of its workforce as a part of a global cost-cutting campaign, instigated by the new CEO Meg Whitman. Um, according to several reports, HP will let any go anywhere between twenty-five thousand and forty-eight thousand employees. That's a lot of people. Yeah, globally, of its three hundred and twenty-four thousand employees. Yeah, That's globally. A lot of people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's uh, no good if you work at HP. You want to be, yeah. Actually, I've got a client who's just he's just started at HP. Now you sent him to Germany and New York and all places, and then he comes back and he hears this on the news, and he's thinking, "Am I next?" And he's only been there about six months. Yeah, right. <laughs> first in, first out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, um, London. I don't know if you saw this story, but it's, it'll obviously probably uh, permeate around the world and over in here to Australia. But London police are getting mobile fingerprint scanners. So the right. 
Yeah, Britain's London Metropolitan Police Service will be issued hundreds of mobile phone-sized biometric fingerprint scanners to help identify anyone suspecting of a criminal offence. So apparently, uh, you know, if, you, if you're going to arrest someone, you take them back to the, to the big house and you fingerprint them. It's about a, you know, two to three hour exercise. Yes. So they're yeah. hoping that by using the mobile devices that, you know, you can get the get an ID on this person. So which, which civil libertarians are jumping up and down and going, oh, human rights breaches. The, just yes, the privacy, the privacy watchdog Privacy International is jumping up and down. Said yeah. pushing forensics processes from the laboratory to the street was a possible breach of human rights law because it could yeah. be used to extract data before an arrest was made. Well, well, then arrest them first. Then, well, that's right. That's right. Because you're allowed to, you're. I think in most jurisdictions, you're allowed to hold someone for 24 hours before you arrest them. So fine, take them down, take them downtown. Yeah, yeah. Fingerprint them and then let them go. Well, if you're doing something wrong, you might as well just get it over with. Just cough, just cough up. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Might as well cough it up. Right. Did you have any other little stories? Well, I've got a couple here. That, um, NBN build. I know you love NBN stories. No, oh, yeah. Can we NBN have build gaining momentum daily, says Quigley. NBN boss uh, Mike Quigley says momentum on the national broadband network is building despite the delays and setbacks in delivering on the government's thirty-six billion dollar project. I was thinking now, this I, morning, actually, what? just trying to get a, an idea of thirty-six billion dollars. Just trying That's to get an money. idea, and I'm just thinking like. Um, Wilkie wants four hundred million for health in Tasmania. Says it would just yes. pull it out of its problems or help pull it out of its problems. And that's four hundred million. That's, yeah, that's a lot. Nowhere near thirty six billion. No, it's not. That's a drop in the no. ocean. Four hundred million is like an that's advertising budget to thirty six billion. Yes. That's right. and it probably is the advertising budget. <laughs> no one's no one's gonna watch. But thirty six um, wasn't Bill Gates worth thirty six billion about ten years ago? He's he's worth more than that now. Yeah, but he was. No, I mean back. You know, obviously back then, as a, yeah, as a yeah, he was worth thirty six billion dollars about ten years ago. That's right. Yeah. So like, and it, and you know, and he was the richest man in the world. That's how much That's money right. this is. This yes, is correct. how much money this is. This is an immense amount of money. Look, look, I've I've never really thought that the you know it was a bad idea. I think they're going to spend they're spending and will spend more than they should because of inefficiencies and you know, governments. And Labor Party especially have no idea how to run anything or implement or execute anything. Wasn't and that's the problem. The idea is, is sound. The execution is always a, is a basket case with, with uh, any Labor socialist government. But mm. nevertheless... Wasn't there another... Um, yeah, sorry, keep going. Sorry, that's right. They have now... In February, as you remember, we're having a bit of a joke that they installed 5,500 people on the network in February. Yeah. Um, from February to... Now May they've are up to eleven thousand. So that's another five and a half thousand up to May. Mm. So that means that the cost <laughs> <laughs> that little calculator has got smoke coming yeah, out of it. It. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, I think it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per connection. Um, now it's down to uh, one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars per connection, but. That's providing that this is accurate. It just seems to me that's exactly double since the last time they had a Senate hearing to the next time they've had a Senate hearing. It's exactly double. Now, <laughs> why couldn't it be we've got, you know, 12,624 or we've got yeah. 9,856? No, mm. we've got 11,000. But and we had five and a half in February. But the next line there in that article, work has begun in areas with about 318,000 premises. At this rate, the, the, good the, luck. The second coming, Jesus will be here before that's finished. That's right. He might be able no, to speed be. it up Actually, a bit. You know what? I could die and come back myself before <laughs> this, before this was installed. Oh, you know, if, if yeah. I if I believed in the Buddhist reincarnation mantra, yeah, I could die and be reincarnated as Julia Gillard before this <laughs> before this is built. You'd be reincarnated a hundred thousand times. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> but yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. But another, I suppose, another good news for Jonathan Ives. He's um, he's now Sir Jonathan Ive. Sir, Sir, rise, Sir Jonathan. Yes, 
rise, Sir John. Now, for those of you who are on the video, I got a picture. Not that you probably care too much, but there's a little, little picture of him there. <laughs> So, who is Jonathan Ive, you might say? He's the British designer responsible for Apple iMac, iPod, iPhone, and iPad. The design of them all. The 45-year-old said the... Oh, that's a big word. The investiture. Yes. What does that mean? The investiture. Well, that's the actual knighting. That's the, the, yeah, the right. process of I've being never, knighted. I've never actually heard that word before. But anyway, there you go. I've learned something. You never heard he. No, <laughs> the investiture in front of Princess, I think that looks like Margaret, Anne? Yeah, Anne. Anne. Um, was really thrilling and particularly humbling. So he's based in the US. He's the senior vice president of Apple's industrial design. He flew into the UK with his wife and eight-year-old twin sons for the event. He was born in Chingford, Chingford, East London, Chingford. and studied at Newcastle Polytechnic. He was made a knight, a knight commander of the Order of the British Empire in the New Year Honours list for services, design, and enterprise. So is he in the, is he in the same uh, category as Bond? Ah, uh, yes, he would be James, Sir James Bond. Because mm, he was a he uh, he was a knight commander of something, wasn't he? Ah, uh, look, the, the English have got you know, knight commander of you know toilet brush. So, you know, that's, you know how many they've got. Yeah, got a few, you reckon? Yeah, I reckon they've got a few divisions there. <laughs> now, I want to know who who the the fellow to his to to the right of the picture is that's looking away from Jonathan. Yeah, who is that? Hang on, I've lo I've I've let the picture is go. It, Let's have another. Is that a look. is that a Madame Tussauds wax dummy or is that a real person? <laughs> I think it might be a dummy. Yeah. They all look pretty stiff, though, don't they? Well, you know, the English have never been known for their relaxation. <laughs> but it's funny because I think they're the most humorous people on the planet. Hey, look, some of the best shows are, come from England. I know. Maybe that's why, because they're so uptight that someone, you know, that their shows are so popular, give them all a little bit of relief mm. and pull their carrots out of their, you know, out of their hoo has. That guy, <laughs> that guy looking away, he's like the police at the footy. You know, he's looking at the crowd. Yes. He's not looking you know, at the, the action. Cricket, making sure you don't rush the pitch. That's right. Know, what a boring job. What a boring job that would be. Would I bet it? he gets paid better than you and me. <laughs> oh, he probably, oh, that blow there, he probably, he probably yeah. does. Now, what what have you? What else have you got in your little list here? My little list? I have a list. The Ad, Ad Zapper. Zapper. Yeah, what's that? Ad Zapper DVR has TV networks worried about sales. The maker of a new DVR that lets consumers zap away broadcast TV commercials at a touch of a button, suggested that the networks are being short-sighted <laughs> in opposing the technology. You know what? I don't think they're being short-sighted at all. I'd be worried as hell myself. So, yeah, I know. But like, uh, good for us, bad for them. Bad, exactly. But then, it, like, like anything, innovation, innovation drives imagination or vice versa. Yeah. Now, if this is going to be um, a common thing and everyone's going to start buying because they all hate ads, well, then you're going to have to start coming up with different ways of making money. Mm. It's change, change your model. Mm. And it might be embedded ads that, you know, different technologies that you can't zap it, for example. They're embedded or they've, they're, they're more discreet. But the, know, problem, the problem being, well, I suppose you could get your own, your, your own um, business model. But like, say, you, you got a show from the US. I don't know. Call it James Bond, right? Mm -hmm. So now Sony, they, they, you know, it's prolific. The, the Sony products through the James Bond movies. So they've obviously mm -hmm. paid the studio. Sony's paid the studio so much amount to to have to to utilize and show the product throughout the movie. So yep. that's fine. That's good. Product placement, good. Now, yep. Channel Seven, ten years later, uh, is just rerunning that movie. They're getting diddly squat. They're getting that's ads. Right. They're getting ad zapped, and they're getting diddly yep. squat from the product yep. placement. So, how does that going to work? Don't know. <laughs> It'd be interesting. It'll be interesting to yes. see what happens and. You know, watch this space, I say. I think a lot of you know, the likes of Channel 9, obviously, and Channel 10 will start. Um, Remember. They're going to start inventing technology that overcomes this, probably. Yeah. I'm sure there is. Remember back uh, in, the, in the late 70s, I think it was, uh, the British TV, they had, they had devices that would not record the ads, cut the ads out of your TV show. Do you remember yep. that? And you can still see the remnants of that today still because you watch some of these old, 
UK shows. I'm talking like George and Mildred. Um, yep, on the buses. Yeah, Benny Hill and all this sort of stuff. Now you have yeah. a look before an ad. You'll see up in the top right hand corner a little square, and it all right. and it comes down with a lot of little. It's just a square. It's just sort of flashing and zapping and whatever. So that that was the the signal to tell the device there's an ad coming up and to stop recording. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so right, and and even ad right. ad zapping is alive and well today on the Windows Media Center. There's plugins that will stop re- the recording of ads. That they just yeah. recognize the ad somehow through some algorithm, recognize that the ad's an ad, and pretty stops successful. recording. Yeah, and yeah, and stop. Yeah, so, yeah, so well, maybe it's because the audio of the ads, even though the networks always deny this, is always louder. The, the audio on the ads every time you, every time an ad comes on, I've got to turn the TV down. Yeah, and it annoys the hell out of me. And I reckon maybe these plugins or these ad zappers or these DVRs can detect that the audio is higher. So they're going right. If it reaches above this decibel, which is the normal volume of the show, don't record. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So maybe if the, all they have to do is leave the ads at a normal level, and it'll beat the ad zapper. But do you think that's actually uh, is actually uh, louder? As in decibel wise, or is it just um, differently recorded, like not as compressed? Not sure. They always say something like it's because this in in an ad for if you're watching a TV show, there's only one or two people talking. Um, but in an ad, there's maybe a few people talking. There's maybe some music, so there's a lot more sounds. It's, mm. I think they, they've said that the, because there are more noises, it seems like it's louder. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Get the, but I always turn it down. I always yeah. turn it down the ads. I always say, oh, turn that bloody ad down. Oh, look, I've, I've just got, obviously everyone's got the remote control right next to them. And as soon as yep. the ad comes, I'd mute it straight up, just mute. Yeah. But then, Hate it. But then again, like, I'm hardly ever watching these days a live show. I honestly don't watch live TV. And I can't remember when the last show was I would have watched live. Yeah, look, I don't watch a lot of live. I might watch Top Gear. Yeah, you no. know, but that's recorded, and then when everyone goes to bed, I'll just play it off the recorder. Yeah, well, even with the you know, fast forward the ads, even with the football, like I'll sit down and do say computer work. It say starts at four o'clock on a Sunday. I'll sit down and do computer work till about half past four twenty to five, and then I'll start pl- chase playing the recording, and then I can right. watch it no ads, still finish at six o'clock, and I've had an extra hour of work, half hour of work. Yeah, so, there you go. Oh uh, yeah, so. You know, bad luck, bad luck ads. <laughs> yeah, bad luck. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't want to, you know, obviously they make the television stations money. Yeah. And, you know, you know, you don't want them to go broke because they have the content that we all record and watch later. Yeah, so, I don't know what they're going to do either. But talking about remote controls, the, he, the inventor, Eugene Apolli, he has died, age of 96. The pause button was... Pause forever. Yeah, the stop button. The eject stop. button. <laughs> oh, dear. Zenith Electronics said Eugene Polly passed away of natural causes on Sunday at a Chicago hospital. His 1955 invention, Flashmatic. And uh, if you ever want to have a look at the Flashmatic, here's one here if you're on the vid. The Flashmatic. Like hairdryer. That's what they likened it to. Uh, pointed a beam of light at photo cells on each corner of the TV, turning it off. And on and changing the channel, the flash, matic, good Very stuff. Good. Um, so yeah, so see you later. Uh, what else? What do you got? Something else before oh, just we one go? One last one from me. Um, commercial spacecraft built by PayPal billionaire speeds towards space station, opening a new entrepreneurial area in spaceflight. A ship built by a or you know, a spaceship built by a billionaire businessman sped towards the International Space Station with a load of groceries and other supplies on Tuesday. The launch of the Falcon 9 rocket, mm. unmanned at this stage, went, was sent up to the International Space Station. And I've got some pictures here if you want me to uh, well, I can show. share that with you. Oh, you can show it. You've got it there. Yeah, scroll down. There you go. Is that that's it going it. off? That's one of them. And there's a one prior to that. At the takeoff, just at, just before takeoff, Elon Elon is it Elon Musk? I think it's Elon Musk is the PayPal billionaire that paid for this, oh, um, right. completely privately funded, and uh, yeah, there we go, uh, privately funded. Well, 
we all we've spoken about this before. Richard Branson's got a spacecraft going up, I think, in twelve twelve or eighteen months, and a lot of people already paid half a million dollars or so, or whatever it is, two hundred fifty thousand mm. for a seat on that. On a Madness. Out. They're not going to land anywhere. They're going up into space, have a cup of tea, and come home. Mm. So, oh, good on him. Have a cup of yeah. tea. And he's only forty. This guy's forty. The billionaire. Yeah. Pay, PayPal was my idea. Oh, this is the same guy <laughs> that runs the Tesla Tesla motors, you know, the electric cars. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. Same bloke. Uh, good for him. Yeah, good on you, mate. You stole my idea. Good on you. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to sue you. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that uh, just about wraps up our show for this week. So um, Yes, it does. That is very, very good. So thanks, everyone, for downloading. Thanks for listening. Thanks to those guys that uh, listen to us from overseas. Thanks for get, anyone that listens. Thank you. If you you might maybe we could get it included in the in the spacecraft as yes. a as a send it up on space and they can watch it. That's right. Well, they probably got technology to be able to. Will they have the internet up there? Oh, I guess? Yeah, for they'd, sure. They'd have something up there, wouldn't they? Yeah. I think they're the closest to the satellites than we are. <laughs> <laughs> they probably stick their 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 coat hanger out. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're the just. <laughs> <laughs> wingle the coat hanger. I got it. I got That's it. it. I got it. I got it. Oh, the sun, solar flare. Yeah. All right. Oh. So, so thanks for joining us. We'll be back again next week. More, more, uh, more, more, more tech news. Tech news. The show notes. Eric and myself. Show notes will be up on the AussieTechHeads.com.au website uh, pretty soon after the show. And also Garth's videos. If you want to see Garth's videos, you don't have to the uh, trawl through the whole, scrib through the whole show. You can just download them or watch them. Uh, just quickly off the web page in the individuality. So um, good stuff. All right, so we'll be back next Thursday night, barring illness, and we'll we'll see you then. See you later, Eric. See you, mate. Thank uh, you, sir. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.